Hi everyone. In this uh, tutorial, I want to show you how you can integrate Maester with Azure DevOps. So if you don't know Maester, uh, you can read all about it on maester.dev. Maester is a PowerShell-based test automation framework that can help you stay in control of your Microsoft security configuration. It is built on Pester and it can run daily tests against your tenant to see if you're still on the right track. Now, of course, you can do that manually, but we all love automation. So that's why I want to show you how you can integrate it with Azure DevOps. There are more ways to do it. Um, you can use Azure DevOps pipelines, but you can also use Azure Automation or GitHub Actions. But in this case, I want to show you how to use it uh, using Azure DevOps pipelines. The documentation is already very good, but um, some folks are maybe not very uh, uh, used to use pipelines in Azure DevOps. And maybe you learn faster if you also see it in action. So that's why I wanted to show you and for me, it's also a uh, learning curve. Uh, so I wanted to share that with, uh, with the community. So um, let's go. What do we need? So of course we need an Azure DevOps uh, a tenant and that comes with a free tier. So you can just enable it for free. Uh, it will include 1800 minutes of, of tests per month. So you can use that for your demos or for just playing around with it or show it to your colleagues, for example. But one thing uh, I want to say before uh, is that if you if this is the first time you're using Azure DevOps, you need to create a new organization, but you will also uh, need to submit this form that's mentioned here. And that's uh, basically to uh, request Microsoft hosted agents that you can use in your pipelines. And it might take, um, well, uh, it might take a few days. In my case, it took 12 hours before uh, the, it was approved. So, if you're seeing this and you want to get started with this, maybe you should fill in this form first and then follow the steps in this tutorial. So um, we have our Azure DevOps, uh, uh, Azure DevOps environment, and we have um, requested the Microsoft based, uh, the Microsoft hosted agents. Of course, we need an Entra tenant or a Microsoft 365 tenant to run our tests against. Uh, and with that, we can start with the first step. So we, the first step is um, that we create a new project. So let me head over to my Azure DevOps environment. You can see I don't have any project. It's my uh, my own test uh, uh, environment. And let's go ahead and create a new project named Maester. So while that's um, being created, the second thing that we need to do is basically import the tests uh, from GitHub into Azure DevOps. So this public repository on GitHub, uh, we can copy that. And the instructions say that we need to go to repos. So let's do that. And here we can find import a repository. So we can uh, just choose the repository type Git and we can paste in that URL and it will now pull all the files from the GitHub repository into Azure DevOps. So while that's running, we uh, take a look at the next step. So we need to set up an Azure pipeline. So um, Azure DevOps is gonna talk to our Entra tenant and we can do that in two ways. We can use, of course, workload identity for the federation, which is recommended, but it also requires an Azure subscription. I want to take the, I, I, want, I want to keep this as simple as possible. So in our case, we're gonna take a look at the client secret. So we're gonna use a client secret to do the authentication against Microsoft Entra. And in order to do that, we need to create a new app registration. And then we need to add specific permissions to that and we need to create a client secret. Now, when I head over to my Android tenant, I already created that. Those are basically a couple simple steps. Just under applications, you can find app registrations, you can create a new one, give it this name. And then all you need to do is set specific API permissions. So you can just add new permissions here by picking this button, choose Microsoft Graph, pick the application permissions, and then you can just search for, for example, uh, directory read all. You can just paste it in here and it will show you the, uh, the permissions. I already done that. So 
don't forget to grant admin consent after you're done. So that's basically what you need to do on the intro side so that the tests can all run. After that, you added the permissions and granted the admin consent. Now we need to create a client secret. So over here, we're going to create a new client secret. Um, there is a suggestion here for the name, which of course we're going to copy. And we're going to uh, let this to the default. You can say add. And now you need to copy the value of the secret. If you don't do this now, it's not possible. So please do it straight away after you create it. Otherwise, you can create a new secret and then copy it to your clipboard. Because with this secret, we're going to head back to the repository and uh, follow the steps here. Because from the um, uh, repository, we're going to create a new pipeline. So here we're going to create a new pipeline. Uh, we need to pick the Azure repos Git. And here we can see the repository that we just created and pulled from GitHub. So we're going to select that. We're going to pick the starter pipeline. I'm just following the documentation here, as you can see. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do, we have the secret still on our clipboard. So we're going to create a variable. So a new variable, I'm going to paste it in and I'm going to tick this box. So we want to keep this value secret and the name of the variable needs to be client secrets. So there we go. Then we're going to create the other ones. So client ID. Client ID can also be found in Entram. So after you created your secret, you can go to the overview page of your app registration. And here you will find the application slash client ID, which you can just copy and then paste in here. So that's done. And the last one uh, is the tenant ID, which you can copy from the same page, which is called directory slash tenant ID. We can also paste that in here. So basically what we've now done is that we um, made it possible that Azure DevOps can now, uh, this pipeline can now talk to our intra tenant and has the right permission. So don't forget to hit this save button. And now our variables are stored within the pipeline that is ready to use. Now, um, now we need to replace the content of the YAML file with this content here. So I'm just gonna do this instead. And that's basically it. So now we can um, validate and save and we can run it. So let's see how that goes. So we will now kick off the pipeline. We can see that the job here is now queued. And if we click on it, we can see the progress. So we can follow the pipeline is being built and being, uh, uh, we can see while, it, while it's running. You can see here that it's running the master tests. We come back to that in a, in a second. But basically from a configuration side of things, these are all the steps to uh, clone your repository, then build your pipeline and create the Entra app registration in the Entra portal. So that's not too hard, right? So we can see that um, the tests are, are now running, which is pretty cool. And now just wait for it to finish. It shouldn't take uh, long. Uh, so we can see uh, the reports because that's uh, mentioned. We can view the test results um, because after this job is done, it will publish an artifact and we can just basically click on that and see the, the reports in HTML. So job is being finished. Let's go back to our overview. And as you can see here, we got one related artifacts being published, which are the test results. So in my case, I will just pick the HTML version and let's open that. And here we can see our shiny master test results report, which we can see all the tests that have run and we can see uh, if they're uh, failed or passed. So that's awesome, that's awesome so far. So now we have our pipeline up and running. Um, and do know if you take a look at the repository that Maester comes with a couple of built-in tests. So the tests that we are built in are sitting over here, but we also seeing other folders. So we have several other tests that's being integrated with Maester, but we can also use our own tests. And I want to quickly show how you can build your own tests. So within the custom folder, we're going to create a new file. And um, 
in the documentation, we're going to select writing custom tests because this is also very good explained in the documentation, but I'm going to quickly show you how it's done. So with custom tests, it, one, it, one thing is very important is that you need to use this suffix for all your tests. So it needs to end with .tests.ps1. So that's one thing that we're going to do. Basically, we can give it any name. So custom test one dot test dot ps1 we create it and basically we now have a blank file we're going to use this example here this is a common scenario that will check for a specific group in enter id if it has any members if yes this the, the test succeeds if not the, the test fails so we're going to copy this and drop it in here we can uh, then um, replace the tags if needed in my case my tenant is also called contoso so i will leave it to that I will also leave the title. One thing that we need to do is to make sure that the group ID, which is checking, is this actually a, a group ID within our tenant. So let me quickly find a test group that we can use. So here I have all my groups. Uh, let's pick this one. Uh, it has 70 members, so that should work. Copy the, uh, the group ID, get back to our test and just replace that to a commit, click commit. So now the test, the, the test is added to the repository. Now, one thing that's important, if we look at the pipeline itself, we can see how the tests are being uh, configured. So here we can see that the, the, the script, the, the, the YAML pipeline is basically just invoking the, the uh, PowerShell module of Maester, and it will run a new test. But also we can see that there is a path parameter, and that path parameter is pointing to, let me quickly resize this, is pointing to tests slash Maester. So it is pointing to this folder over here, so the, the built-in tests, and we want to run the custom tests. So in order to do that, Let's get back to the pipe, to the repository. I open up the, the pipeline and we're gonna edit this file. So what we can do is just replace master with custom. So it will only run the tests within the custom folder, but we can also just go one level higher and just delete the, the folder. And it will just run every test that are in all the, the folders. So in this example, uh, I will do that. I will do commit so that the repository is now updated. And then I will go back to the pipeline and just run the pipeline from here. Now, because it now it's going to run all the tests, it might take a little longer. We can see here how that's going. So I might, might speed up this video a little bit. And once it's done, I will show you the results. So looks like our job is done. So. Let's see if the test results are already published. There we go. Test results. As we can see, uh, more tests are now run. And we can also in the report see our own custom test that we just um, created. So that works. So um, I hope you uh, learned something today. And I hope you can um, give this a spin. This is, it's a great uh, net, it's a great framework to test your uh, Entra security configuration. And I hope um, using this tutorial, you can uh, give it a, a try sometimes and um, we'll probably run it in production one day. So um, I, uh, thanks for watching and um, until next time.